Friends, I want to talk about your collection and how you want to add something to your collection, something that I call a wild card. What is a wild card watch? A wild card is a watch that has unique styling, styling that makes that watch unlike any other watch in your collection, unlike any watch in anyone else's collection. In a way, you could say the watch is you. It, it, it's an opportunity to express your individual tastes without um, being on the same page as everybody else. And uh, you know, there's, there's a desire for that in your watch collection. It's nice to break conventions. It's nice to go off the grid. It's sometimes nice to be a little bit over the top. I think all these distinguishing characteristics make for a um, a wild card watch. Now I want to tell you something. I don't have a wild card watch in my collection. And I have eight watches and they're all fairly conventional. And I you know I, I have your conventional diver watches. Probably my Orient Saturation Diver represents the epitome of, of a, uh, a luxury watch at that price point. You know they're about a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars for that price point. You know I feel that I'm, I'm doing a uh, keeping and maintaining a very conventional uh, watch collection. Now here uh, on the screen is a Citizen CC22, I'm sorry, CC2006-53E. This, for shorthand, it's, it's called the F100. It's one of those uh, satellite wave watches. And it's, it's very interesting. I, I have to say, I'm not in the market for it. It's about 1300 bucks. I, I wouldn't mind having one. Uh, it's a very interesting watch. Uh, I lost it for a second. So the, um, the watch is 44 millimeters. Uh, one of the, the uh, things about a, uh, a wild card watch is, and for me, it, it's something that I, I consider, am I gonna keep it? Is the watch a keeper? Or is, is the watch uh, gonna be getting flipped? I don't like flipping watches. You know all the watches I flipped? I could buy a couple of tier four watches with all the money I lost from flipping. And so I got some issues with flipping watches. And, and my concern with getting a, uh, a watch, which I would call a wild card watch, is the flip factor. Uh, the other concern I have with a, uh, with a wild card watch is the sci-fi factor. I mean, what do you are you auditioning for Battlestar Galactica? Are you going to be an extra in the next uh, version of Barbarella? Where are you going with your wild card watch anyway? I don't know, but uh, I, I do like this watch. It's 44 millimeters. I mean, in a way, you're your own man, and I like the bracelet. I like everything about it. I believe it's titanium. And so that would be one wild card I, I would like to show you. Let me see if I can get you another wild card watch. Oh, look at this thing. Uh, I've been looking at this for about a year now. Th this is part of uh, another citizen, the Altacron Cyrus. And there are about three variations of this. And these uh, sometimes can be found on sale from the Duty Island on eBay for as low as 1100 And you'll see uh, variations of this go for as high as like 2300 or so. Sapphire Crystal, about 51 millimeter case. What an unusual watch, but my goodness, I don't know. Am I going to keep that after a year? Jeez, um, what, what, a, what a statement, though. I, I, I kind of like it. I mean, the more I look at it, uh, I, I, I like it, but is it a keeper? That, that goes back to that same question. Definitely uh, is over the top. It definitely is going to have wow factor on your wrist, but... Um, you know, I, I, I look at Johnny Casual, who just bought a Breitling Blackbird, and you know, that's got wow factor on the wrist, but it also inspires confidence that it's going to be a keeper. Maybe this, this particular watch is like dating uh, a dancer with a, with a name like Cookies and Cream, and, and you know, how long is that going to last? I don't, but then again, I'm not being fair to this watch. Uh, from what I've read, this watch um, has very high build quality. It is not just some floozy to be belittled here for the international watch community. And again, you know, if you can get these for 1100 I don't know. If you think it's a keeper, uh, I understand. You want to mix things up. Let's see, you know, G-Shock. You, you want to hear something about G-Shock? They are now. G-Shock is now making 
their uh, aviation watches, the ones that I like, you know, the analog, I, I could care less about the digital, they are now making them with sapphire. I think they're about, they start around 660 or so, they go up to, uh, you know, 800. They're making uh, sapphire. Wow, what a statement. What a, Again, you know, what are you, you going into a sci-fi movie with that thing on? Are you a superhero? I like it. I don't know if it's a keeper, though. I really don't know. Uh, if you want to get a, uh, a wild card watch that I used to own, and I kind of miss it. The thing is, uh, this is my photograph. Let me see if I can get you a better focus. This is the Citizen BN2029. I, it just occurred to me that, well, no, the G-Shock was a non-Citizen. Now here is a watch. You can get these uh, on eBay if you look hard for $465 to $485. My only problem is they have mineral crystal. I'd really like to get that with Sapphire, but it is a deep dish beauty. And again, you know, are you going to keep it? Or are you going to flip? I mean, I ended up flipping mine. Granted, uh, I kind of miss it. But um, I'm just curious, you know, how you feel. Do, do you, do you want to keep your collection safe? Do you want to keep it conventional? Do you want to stick with the standard diver cues? Or, or do you feel the urge to mix things up and, and live on the edge and be a little bit daring? Uh, that's pretty much where I stand. I mean, I have, I'm not opposed at all to someone getting one or two uh, of these what I call wild card watches just to mix things up. My only concern is how much money you're going to spend on something that may or may not be a keeper. That's my question for today, and until next time, I'm gone.